Hey guys, okay, so look, I've been listening to a lady on YouTube named Gigi Young, and she talks about like esoteric, she talks about extraterrestrials, she talks about like the Kundalini, just all the like energy, which is so up my alley. I'm like, yes, let's talk about it. Like, like I've been back to back to back just listening to all of her stuff. Again, her name is Gigi Young. I am gonna go over something that specifically resonated with me as far as like, cause I, I grew up in the church, you know, I see how they teach. I see the dynamics of like the church structure, right? So I just wanted to talk to you of like what I picked up off of her channel. Again, an amazing channel. But um, the other one that I'm listening to is Leak Project. Again, it's on YouTube, but y'all, they're talking real, real talk energy. Like you can't, I know some people are like, well, I trust the science. Okay. Well, you can't like not trust this. This is, this is energy. This is us. We are energy. We are a spirit having a human experience. So I wanted to pull some, um, Oracle cards, um, real quick. Sage, you guys, a lot of energy is rolling around, especially with this moon phase. This moon phase is, Ooh, y'all. Mm. Look now. Sorry if you have the earphones in. Huh? I love that. Mm, singing bowls. I wish I had a whole set. Beautiful. Now this will actually clear the energy too. It'll clear the room, clear your, your space. Um, so like... Even when I'm saging, I sage um, just to tell you guys, because I know I have some new new witches on my channel, but just when you're saging, just go throughout the house, okay? You, I don't think that there's an actual like way to do it. Um, nobody, I guess, has convinced me that there's this way, like with facts and like this, this, and this, and that kind of thing. I think it's just kind of something that how you do it okay so i start it at the front because that's where energy would come into the door so when i say energy i'm talking about your friends family um neighbors whoever when they're coming into the front door i go ahead and sage that um i also put a piece of um, selenite over the door to for, just for protection um i kind of walk how a a visitor would walk, you know, because they're bringing energy into your house too. Now, if you go to an antique shop and you buy a particular piece of furniture and say that Pat Paul built that, right? I always use this analogy because I like antiques. So say Pat Paul built this um, particular desk, actually the desk in my, in the background, uh, my grandfather bought. So I'm sure that he's, you know, it's kind of sentimental to him, right? It stayed in the family, that kind of thing. He's already passed. Um, but bringing an outside piece of furniture or an object of any, any sort into a home, you are bringing in that particular energy. So just like when they say pray over your food, you don't know who made that food. So say, say I'm just a really evil person. I have a lot of attachments say, say my auric field is very fractured, that kind of stuff. And I'm just a very mad individual. Well, if I'm making your food, my energy is going into your food. That's why, like, even with water, if you have, if you have water, pray over it, clear the energy off of anything. So going back to the furniture, Papa could be in your house. Now, now he lives with you because you have his piece of furniture, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I am going to run Oracle off of The Universe Has Your Back. That's uh, Gabriel Bernstein. Um, but you have to be very careful with, like, picking up antiques and that kind of stuff. Plus, um, you don't know if there's, like, say you find a trinket box or something like that. And you're like, oh, my God, this is so cool. But you open it, and there was already a curse placed on it. And you opened that trinket box. And now you just let that whole energy curse out into your bedroom or wherever you opened the box, right? So be careful of stuff like that um, because energy can linger on top of um, on top of items, any items. It doesn't matter. Um, even, even down to like blood rituals and stuff. It's just it, people do some weird shit. So you have to really protect yourself and protect anything that like 
you pick up at the Goodwill, say you found something so cool or whatnot, and then you brought it home. Well, that residual energy is on that particular object and now you just brought it into your house. So when you're saging anything, you have to go like, go normally how like energy would come into your house, but then also go where you would too. Like I would even sage your bed. You spend a lot of time there in the bed sleeping, right? So um, if you do have like even nightmares or anything that's, you know, kind of scary in your bedroom, you can put salt underneath your bed. You can also use tourmaline. It's a crystal. Um, typically black uh, crystals like onyx or tourmaline or um, obsidian um, you can use um, as protection. You can wear it on you um, as a like a pendant or bracelet. It's funny. I don't even have my on. I'm not even protecting. I have no crystals on right now. Shocker. Um, but you know, you just have to go around the space that you're in. Um, if it is something where you're really starting to hear like knocking on the walls or you're starting to kind of feel energy around you, I understand. Don't be scared. But on the flip side, I would ask who it is. Who, who's here to bother me <laughs> in my little 3D land? You know, like, like who are you? And, um, you know, you just have to like be very, very matter of fact, because that is actually your space. That's your home. So if you don't want them to bother you um, during the night, you tell them that I have visiting hours. You can't just bother me all the time at three o'clock. That's why I know when something comes through, when I start to wake up at two and three o'clock, I'm like, clearly that's a message because we have boundaries and you guys are, are literally invading my boundaries, you know? So, um, again, in that case, it is kind of, you know, I guess alarming to talk to like a spirit, but they're around us regardless if you really want to believe it or not. So, um, but back to Gigi Young. Okay. I'm real talk. If you guys are into this, like woo woo stuff, look her up literally. I mean, she just, she, it was, I'm still addicted to her. Like whenever I went to watch something at night or whatever, I pull up her channel and I'm like, Ooh, what are you talking about? You know, just cause like, I don't, I don't really watch TV. I just rather educate myself on things that actually matter than like the bachelor. <laughs> I don't care. So, um, when, when you're in certain timelines and of course I wrote down, um, I had to write notes, but when you're in your timeline, that's an esoteric timeline. Um, there's a specific stream of consciousness materialized in your timeline. So that could be also like indoctrinations or things like that, like the schooling system or the church or even family. Family can indoctrinate you into thinking that you have to do this, that, and the other. Just like it can indoctrinate you into thinking that um, like you have to go to college and if you don't go to college, then you're less, okay? You're not going to be the cool part of the family. You're going to be, you're going to sit at the kid's table, you know, that kind of thing for the rest of your life. Um, but in that timeline, there is a four, um, hold on, two collective. Okay, so collective, that would be humanity. Um, individual timelines are your personal timeline. So that this is like my timeline while I've been here on earth. So from birth, what has happened in my timeline to mold me, to, to sh structure my foundation? Is my foundation of who I am very weak because I'm a people pleaser? Um, I'm trying to get outside validation into myself. So that would, that would make that timeline kind of weak, right? I, I didn't really have a grasp on who I was as a person, a human here on earth, right? So that is, there's a collective, like a humanity. So like me, you, and whoever else is watching this, that would be collective. But individually, my personal timeline would be my contract, so to speak, with God, what I was going to do. Now, I'm just, I need to say this in the contract, when you come down and you have a contract, God does give us free will. So that's kind of a, a way, it's a way to like opt out. It's like, okay, you sign up for something and you have A or B. That's your, that's your, your free will. So throughout your timeline, you'll have, do you want to do A or do you want to do B? So over my timeline, I've noticed that I would always pick the wrong one, you know, but the reason why I would pick the wrong one is because of somebody else. It wasn't for my own good. I would always diminish myself to make this other person feel better about life or, or feel smarter or whatever, whatever the, the case may be. Um, and then one and two consciousness is genuine. 
Okay, here, here's where I started to, with Gigi. I was like, girl, she said progressive Christ impulse. It's a stream of energy. So it's an engine. It's literally what pushes you, your motivation. It pushes you throughout the day. But the progressive Christ impulse, that's where it's like, you guys know that I talk about like, Jesus being an ascended master. He's not like God. He That's different. That's a consciousness. Jesus was actually hybrid because he was human and angelic because Mary was his mom. Archangel Gabriel was his dad. <laughs> Made a kid, right? So, so to have this pulse, you have to do like a huge evaluation with, within yourself. Who are you? That, that's the free will. You keep, you keep picking somebody else over yourself. You keep be, being distracted by somebody else and you're not walking into your own power because you're like, oh, well, I don't want to hurt her feelings or, oh, I don't want to do, you know, that kind of thing. So you're not in your Christ impulse, that, that pulse that runs through you. Um, so to activate, once you do like activate this Christ impulse, this is where I think it started. I was like, Y'all. Okay. So the buildup of chi. Chi is like energy force. That's your prana. That's your key. That's your that your life force that comes through from source energy, right? This energy. Remember, we're a spirit having a human experience. This is just our meat suit. So the light that pressurizes and awakens the DNA. So say, say you have Ugh. Okay, so it pressurizes, right? So say you're going through something, you're in a dynamic of a relationship with another human, um, maybe human, <laughs> but you're in a relationship with another person and they are pressuring you into doing something maybe wrong or they're diminishing your light and you are of light. So as the light gets compressed, then all of a sudden you're gonna have this awakening like, wait a damn minute, you know? holy hell, who the hell are you to do that to me? You, that kind of thing. You're going to have this awakening, this epiphany of, of like coding, right? Because source energy, God energy is not going to allow like God's child. You know how they like, they say that just that's because we're in the infancy of, of being our greatest good. Right. But God's not going to allow that to happen to it, it, for somebody that actually has a purpose. And I'm not even saying like there's people out there that don't have purposes because I don't believe that either. I think they take the wrong path, right? So if you're a person of consciousness and you really think about the things that you're doing or you think about the things that you're saying or or, you're, or, or how it's going to end up in the long run, because, because think about it, when you're going through life, you make those choices of, okay, I don't need to do this because I don't want to make this person feel insecure or I'm doing this because I want to help promote this person and lift this person up. Like I want to help them rise and grow as an individual, right? So as you have this impulse and you're starting to do this work and you're starting to do the self-development on yourself, you're going to notice, and people say this too, I think the Bible says it, but it says that you're going to get more demons because the closer that you get to God, the more the demons are going to start to act crazy and you can get attachment. Humans can have attachments. Okay. That's an attachment of Jezebel. It could be attachment to porn, greed, um, money, just you're so attached to this, uh, it's almost like an idol to you, you know, like that, that kind of thing. So, so you get so attached that becomes their idol and they start to di like diminish you on your walk on, on your spiritual path. Well, of course, that's what, the, that's what Satan wants, but because you're a people pleaser, then you get off your path and you're just like, and you're kind of keep starting over and over again. And I noticed that I started to do that. And I'm like, damn, that's the buildup of prana. Like I was so into learning about God, learning who I was in God, in me as a human, you know, trying to get that Christ pulse. Like, what did Jesus do? What did he do? He's an ascended master. So he's almost like this example, right? What did he do? How did he get there? Was he actually interfacing with actual demons or was it attachments? You know, like I really kind of put myself into the role of Jesus and what I actually, when I interfaced with this particular person or this disciple, what was actually happening? Because the Bible uses a lot of me like metaphors and like examples and things like that to tell the story. I mean, shit, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were all fucking illiterate. So how do we know that that's actually how they said the story or 
was the person that was like rewriting it. Uh-huh, yep, great, that's great, Matthew. But then all of a sudden he writes something else and it wasn't even Matthew's, you know, perspective, perception of it, you know? So, so you kind of have to like, just keep an open mind when it comes to stuff like that, but like really try to focus on what did Jesus do? What was the Christ pulse? How was he so connected to source energy, right? Source energy, we are uh, energy, spirit, having a human experience. This is just our meat suit. Once our meat, once our, once we die, like our contract like ends, then our body, our flesh goes into the earth and we go back up and we're like, okay, am I done with this shit? I don't want to go back to earth, please. Did I finish? Did, did I, did I understand the assignment this time, sir? You know, like that kind of thing. So the DNA is uh, coded in light. So your DNA literally to the, to the point of like what the name of God means and what the DNA strand and everything, it's literally God. It's literally God and it's breath. It's the, that's, that's how he made us out of a, just a, a conscious mind of going, <sighs> I think that's great. So your DNA is, is coded in light. It's grounded. It's ground the light inside of us. So, so when it was coded, it was inside of us. Again, this is just a meat suit, right? So what happens when we hold more light? Well, what happens is we ascend. So on my snap, I talk about our life being either a table, which we have people around us, or a hotel floors where that's our ascension. We go up to the floors because typically the bottom floor is going to be kind of hectic. You know, maybe you left something out in the car. Maybe you left something at home. Maybe, you know, your reservation wasn't right, right? It's kind of like it's, it's dense energy, dense reality. But as you get up to the floors and then you can see a broader like like viewpoint, then your perspective becomes a little bit more, ah, oh, okay, I can see that these people <laughs> I'm not going to say that. That just came into my mind. I can see that these people don't have a loving relationship just by the interaction because you're looking, you're viewing down on, on the perspective of the collective, right? That's the hotels. So, but the garden, the garden is personal. So, so you have to look into your own garden. What are you showing? What are you producing? What's in your garden? You know, do you have like the outside perimeter full of roses and that's what everybody sees, but within it, it looks like ass, you know, like that's where it's like, you have to let your, your whole pulse of Christ needs to be clean. Not just the outside for fake book. It's for the inside for your soul, right? For the longest time, I was showing this facade of all my roses on the outside of me, yet inside was crumbling because I had people around me diminishing my light. OK, at some point, God is going to give you this tower moment of consciousness where every you, you, you can't not see it anymore. Right. You're seeing the people around you. You're seeing what these people are not putting into your own garden and you're not going to flourish within yourself if you can't even see yourself. Does that make sense? I feel like I kind of talked over it, but it made sense in my head. So the psychic stream of energy, which is spiritual development. Christ, okay, he he knew things prior it happened. He knew that Judas was going to betray him. He knew that, okay? Also, if you want to look into like the zodiac si side of it, Judas actually represents um Scor Scorpio, and the scorpion actually hit when they when they sting you, it, it looks like a little kiss. Anyway, side note, but the psychic stream of energy is literally God consciousness literally consciousness now let's think about that if it's god consciousness and god is a consciousness then that would mean that consciousness has to be inside of us if if i if if god is within me and i i shouldn't fail then that makes so much sense to me again if god is a consciousness right he's a consciousness if he's a consciousness and i hold that same consciousness then that means god is i am god not in a ah, kind of way. I'm talking about like the, I, I represent that pulse, that energy, right? That, that is a, a consciousness of, of Christ. That's the pulse that Buddha, all, all these ascended masters held, right? I, I was going to say monks, but I don't know if they do actually do that. But okay. So based on the level of consciousness, your stream of energy is that that's the alchemy of it, right? So on, on my board, I wrote, um, there's a progress and that would be going up 
and then there's a regress, which would be actually going down. So in the higher timelines, this is going to be my progress side. I'm a visual and I talk with my hands, go with it. So on the progress side, you're going to have higher timelines, ascension, you're going to evolve because again, if you're on the hotel floors, you can see, you can see the different things. You can kind of go, oh, well maybe, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're looking over the side and you're seeing this couple and obviously they're fighting or that kind of thing, and you can kind of hear them, maybe kind of go inward and go, you know what, do I do that? That's, that's being conscious on the higher timelines to be able to look down and go, ooh, but let me reflect on myself. Like, do I do that? Like, you can't, you can't just always go, oh, well, they do that. That's hypocritical. You can't just go, oh, well, they do that. And your ass does it too. You know, like that's narcissism. That's red flags on the play. So the progress is higher timelines, ascension, you evolve. There's you, you, you work out of your heart sh chakra. That's the heart chakra. That's your center. That that's where God is love heart chakra. You know, again, God is consciousness. If I am embody that consciousness and I'm working out of my heart chakra, then hello, you know, ting, ting. So, um, and, and it's more organic. Okay. Um, because you have to go within and you, you are literally the only person on your timeline that has been on your timeline because everybody else that has hurt you is either in your, in your life right now, but maybe not. Okay. You know, or maybe there's gaps in your relationship. Like with my parents, I have huge gaps of, of time that I have not spoken to my parents or my sister or, you know, the people, my family, literally, <laughs> you know, there's huge timelines. So they're not going to know if you've grown, if you haven't, if you, you know, they're not going to know. So when you guys come back together, if you guys come back together and they have a not seen the growth or they're not discerning who you may be after six years, they're not allowing you to grow, but don't get distracted by them and go, oh my God, because that, then you start to feel like, oh, well, I don't feel validated. Okay, well, they were the ones that made, didn't make you feel validated in the beginning, and then you took a six-year stent. Now, all of a sudden, you're allowing them to be back into your life again, and you're feeling the same way. What's the problem? You know, clearly, those people are not operating out of that consciousness to understand that people grow. They move up the hotel floors. It's, it's baby steps. You know, the higher that you go, the more that you can see, the more that you can envision or, or, or understand the higher that you go to is probably the more shit you've gone through. But at that point, you have to understand, like, if that's the more shit that I've gone through, like if that person, when somebody comes at you with some dumb shit, I, I literally now I just look at them because I can see their hurts. I can see their traumas. Why? Because I've already gone through it. I acted the same way when I was going through that same little lull in my life, you know? So the higher, higher the consciousness you are, the more that you're going to be able to have like a heart, like, okay, well, I went through that too. Clearly <laughs> that's how they're acting, you know, that kind of thing. Or they just haven't evolved. They haven't grown. This is the progress. They haven't evolved. They haven't ascended into higher timelines to be able to see that that's not how you fucking treat people, you know? They haven't grown. Their little garden is just a row of fucking roses and the inside is shit, you know? So the other side, here's your re regression. It's a lower vibration. You're going to be in more of a 3D fear, fear, anger. Um, how? What did we see with this whole like, I don't want to the, say the word C-O-V-I-D. That whole thing was fear. What did God say? I did not give you a spirit of fear. He's literally saying that, that that's from Satan. So my consciousness, which I have discernment, Holy Spirit, would be able to say, mm, are they trying to make me scared? Because I really have no fear. I, my immune system is fine. You know, like I, I'm okay. They're promoting it. So who promotes fear? Satan. You know, when you start to get out of this fog of this 3D reality is when you start to realize that they are doing this to you. They're keeping you suppressed. They're dimming your light because they want you in the 3D. They want to be able to control you. They want you to be in your fucking car with a mask on. You're breathing your own breeze. Take it off, Tina. You know, like, that's your own gunk, you know? So in that, your regression is, is lowered. You feel more depressed. They push the pharmaceutical shit. You know, they're, they're constantly pushing, oh, you're ADHD. Okay, well, here's some Ritalin. Oh, you have this. Okay, well, here's some this. Oh, you have high blood pressure. Here's this. How about stop stressing? How about figure out what your energy is and regulate your own energy and bring your fucking shit down so you don't have to take a pill. 
start drinking tea, start to eat alternative other side of things instead of this 3D matrix that we're in is going to help you superstantially. Ah, not a word. So that is also, this low dense is also antichrist because think about it, that's what they're pushing. That's what they're pushing. The Luciferian, they, I, it just blows my mind how people cannot see that this is so Luciferian all the way through. It's in our music. There's poisoning our food. They're, they're put, keeping us in this 3D dense reality so that we don't, why, why would they need to do that? Let's ask that. Why would you need to diminish me and almost kill me off? What, what are you, why are you doing that? You know, like what's the motive in that, right? It's, it's so that you're the slave. You're the slave to them. You're taking their pharmaceuticals. You're doing your nine to five job, you know, slave. Taxes are illegal. I just ugh, need to say that. I felt like Sheldon when I said that, like, ugh, you know, all this stuff. But once we start to wake up and get into the higher timelines is when we can look over and see the government going, uh, there's only like 3% of y'all and there's like a whole lot of us. So if we all stand up, and we all push forward like, no, we're not doing this and start to educate your friends, even if they think you're crazy, because <laughs> as time moves on, I feel more vindicated. You know, it's like just shit's happening. And at first I, I was really scared. Like, do I even tell these people this? I'm about to post on Facebook and I got a lot of pushback from it, but I don't care because I feel like I'm getting vindicated right now. So as you guys move through this dense reality, keep that in mind. Really think about what you, what your energy is doing. Is it regulated? Are you, are you like in this Christ consciousness? Are you, you know, are you intentionally being mean to people? You know, like picking out their flaws and intentionally hurting them with them. I mean, I feel like that's a red flag on the play, but you know, that's, that's low dense, you know, and when somebody is down there, stuck there, it's like, again, when you're up on this higher, you're ascending, right? You can see it because you've already forgiven yourself for things that you have allowed in yourself, in your life, in your storyline, right? So if you've allowed it, like allowed people to like really just mow over your boundaries, that's something that you have to work on. That's something I have to work on because I'm such a damn people pleaser and I end up getting walked over, but that's another show. Um, but for Jacob's Ladder and then the, like the Kundalini Awakening, when people are like, oh my God, you're a witch. I'm like, yes, look into it. You know, because it's it's the same thing, but we don't, we don't operate off of a hypocritical kind of thought process, that 3D. We don't, we don't operate there. We operate up on a, a, a higher dimensional level because we understand. We walked through the fire. We've been burned. We've drowned we've had near-death experiences we've you know just all this stuff we can see it now so it's almost like an initiation where we like move up the richter scale of of ascension and i think that's what jesus did look he wasn't like all love and light all the time he was flipping tables in the temple like i would have loved to been there and just been like damn like, he mad he big mad mm-hmm crazy so once you realize that and like figure out regulate what's your what's your your energy look when i left this marriage i had to really figure out what my energy was because i didn't know i i, I knew kind of where i was at but then i had other people telling me that were around me including family members that i was something else you know and i was like but i'm not i don't even feel that you know but I had to get myself out of that. That's, that's two different energies, right? Birds of a feather are going to flock together. Well, if you ain't feathering with those feathers, it's going to feel weird and you're going to have to like remove yourself from it, you know? And I was scared. I was really scared to do that. It took me a little bit to really jump, but after you jump, you, you, there, you will be caught. You, somebody, angels, ancestors you, will catch you. You will be caught as soon as you jump because you're just like, I'm like, damn, when I jump, I'm going to hit the floor and just splat. It's just going to be a really bad, <laughs> this is going to not end well, but it is everything that I've wished for, everything that I have manifested, everything that I felt in my soul that was right, the right way to do it and not listen to the people around me has transpired bigly, huge. They will catch you, I promise. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, I need glasses for this. It says, the moment I embrace my peace, 
within and surrender the outcome is the moment that the universe can truly get to work. Yes. As soon as you realize that you, this is all a matrix, this is all a played out like plan, right? Orchestrated by the government, which is puppeted by higher people, which is puppeted by higher people. It just keeps going up. There's 3%. Think about all the people that are on the earth right now on flat earth, mind you. Think about it. And there's only 3% that are running this shit and they all own the same shit. There's not really a competition. Like it's not like, oh, well, I'm going to watch this show because I want to promote this channel. Okay. Well, the other channel that you were watching too is owned by the same people. So it's not really a competition. You know, once you've realized that and you can get out of the matrix is when you can really start to, again, start to see down and not that, not that because you're up on the higher like dimensions of the hotel, you're any better because that's not what it is. It's just a consciousness. You're just more conscious. You understand, you can see the damage in people when they're fractured. Why? Because you lived it. And they've probably, when they're ranting at you, said the same thing that you probably said to them when you were in that dark place, not necessarily to them, but you've said it in general because you remember that place that you were in and why you said it before you healed yourself, you know? So once you can start to see all that, it's kind of like, oh, it makes sense. It makes sense that you're just really kind of mean and ugly right now. You're still hurt. You haven't done the work, you know? Not my problem. That's your problem. <laughs> you know, it just, it's not my problem. Through prayer and meditation, I create a ripple effect of peace on earth. Yes, because as a collective, remember collective is humanity. Individual timelines is personal, right? So your individual timeline for your consciousness and what you're wanting to like promote within yourself, right? All, all the competition and all that kind of stuff outside of your person, personal life really doesn't matter. Really does not matter. But within yourself, once you start to move up the timelines, then you start to meet your tribe. You're going to start to meet people because the people that are down on 3D, say you're up in 6. So you're up in 6D. You're above time and space. You can see the things that are going around you. You can see the dynamics and how people are, they working together or what they're working for. You, there's always a kiss ass, you know, or there's always one that slacks and doesn't do shit. You know, that, that kind of, you can see the dynamics of the, the particular people that are in your life. Typically it's part of your soul tribe anyway, or particular, or particular, or it's by your like, um, soul groups. So groups will come in and it's kind of like if I were up in the ethers with you and I'm like, hey, like I'm going to come down at this time. You come down at this time. At some point, we're going to both work together and I'm going to help you ascend. And you're like, okay, cool. So all of a sudden now I start this new job. I realize like there's an energy, a couple of people that are in there, energies that are more familiar to me because it's happened not even with where I'm working now. It's happened actually with like other jobs or even at like pageants, the, the modeling, modeling industry. If I come across somebody that kind of has a, a familiar energy, that's because you, that's because I'm rippling with you at that frequency. Anybody below that's like being hurtful or rude or, or, you know, just mad or what, just cruel bullying you is on a lower level because that's going to be a lower dense kind of frequency and you don't even resonate there. That's what I'm saying. When your parents start to put you at this particular frequency and you're not even there anymore, that's what triggers me because my parents seem to think that I'm still 20, <laughs> you know? So they, they don't give me the rest of my life to heal myself for shit that they've done. They're just going, oh no, she's the same way, you know? So that's a red flag on the play. But anyway, let me run one more. And you guys think about that. Watch the Gigi Young. Y'all, y'all, I can't. Hours, I will spend hours <laughs> just listening to her. It's crazy. I'm so glad I came across her. And the thing is, is that whenever I did come across her, I have actually asked my guides. I was like, okay guys, like I'm kind of sick of listening to the same things. Give me something else, you know, to listen to that will, you know, educate me and help me up my ascension process. And then all of a sudden she came across my thing and I was like, okay. Ask and you shall have it, I guess. Okay. 
When I focus on my inner light, I see the world through the lens of love. Yes, because that's your progress. That's your higher. That's a higher consciousness of love, of God energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So look, it's when I focus on my inner light, I see the world through the lens of love. Yes, because if you have God consciousness and it's literally inside of you, then then that's how you operate. You operate it out of your, your heart chakra. That's just it. And, and you can see, you can see the brokenness in people. You can see the hurt. You can feel it too, God Almighty. If you're an empath, you can feel it. And you're just like, jeez, fix your, <laughs> fix your field, <laughs> your energy field. So anyway, you guys, I love you so much. Do follow me on TikTok. I'm going to try to start doing lives once I can get up to a certain amount of followers. And also on YouTube, same thing. I have to, I think I have to get a, over a hundred of followers, followers. And I don't think, I think I have like 45. So you guys press, the, <laughs> press the uh, follow button and notifications. And I will catch you on the flip side. Love you.